Vincent van Gogh felt that the portrayal of olive trees allowed him to express the struggle of being human and the anxious emotions that come with it. Look at the ground, it is sun scorched. There is a lack of water. The trees seem knotted and in anguish. There's great honesty, but also hope. The branches reach out towards the sun. There's an enormous resilience amidst even the hardest soils. Familiarity and honesty certainly contribute to resilience. But there's also a moment of exasperation. Fear can paralyze, constrain and constrict us but it can also make us feel panicky. Jesus is clearly restless and torn apart. He seeks companionship, but also solitude. Three times, Jesus moves away from his friends and throws himself to the ground, pressing his face into the earth. Acceptance is clearly not the first response to fear. Also not for Jesus. He is not gifted with supernatural powers. There is no divine intervention from above. He is restless. And his restlessness is followed by anger and exasperation. Three times he finds his friends asleep. They have experienced so much together. They have witnessed all the high points of his ministry. So how can they do this to him now? now that he needs them more than ever. Jesus is outraged. They failed him. They failed to reassure him that he's not alone. According to Matthew and Mark, the disciples were overcome by physical exhaustion. Luke detects a spiritual dimension. Profound sadness must have overwhelmed them. This is why Jesus has no option. And to keep searching and seeking another stronger and more reliable presence, deeper roots and stronger branches. And so comes the moment of negotiation. Three times he goes away to pray. First he pleads with God that the cup might not pass him. My father, if it is possible, yet not as I will, but as you will. The second and third time, Jesus already withdraws his wish and concedes, My Father, if it is not possible, may your will be done. Jesus would have preferred to flee. He did not want to drink the cup. He could have escaped in the darkness of the night. To stay is to possibly underestimate the terror and suffering to come. To run away is to live with feelings of guilt and failure with knowing one has betrayed one's calling. He negotiates, resists, resists, and only then, only then does he surrender. Is he able to trust that God will sustain him with life and love when facing a world filled with fear and death? Van Gogh's olive trees have been described as a visual gospel. He wanted to console with his paintings, to help us see the beauty of creation amidst our struggles. He was able to take a traditional image and story and allow it to bring hope and light to those in despair. God's sky and sun become almost a cloak, sorrowful yet rejoicing as they rest on the horizon and begin to enfold the twisted and struggling olive trees. And then comes the moment of surrender. Jesus does not surrender to an impersonal cup or to a faceless hour. He accepts the cup because the cup is offered to him by God, not by his enemies. He accepts the cup because just as back then at his baptism, he once again manages to connect with this parent God who delights in him and now also suffers with him. He accepts the cup not because 
He longs for suffering or because he wants to be a martyr. He accepts the cup because it symbolizes the suffering one always risks when resisting evil in the world and speaking up for those who have been silenced. He accepts the cup not because God wants or needs his sacrifice to forgive us, but rather because it exposes this world and its endless thirst for bloody sacrifices, willingly executed for the sake of power and greed. He accepts the cup not to meet a legal requirement or a divine need for atonement. After all, God abhors human sacrifices. But Jesus accepts the cup to reveal how God's love triumphs over death and is willing to forgive even God's enemies. Nothing can stop God's yes to this world and all its creatures. If only more could trust God's will for life and allow themselves to be sustained by God's love. This then is the redeeming power of Jesus' death at the cross. It exposes the world's brokenness and reveals God's commitment to heal it, whatever it takes. And therefore we rejoice in the fact that Jesus did not live to die, but he died to live. He died because he loved life and wanted it for all, not just for the privileged and powerful, not just for the perfect and esteemed, not just for the poor and vulnerable, but also for the greedy and violent. Peter Fox will now lead us in a prayer of intercession. Together on Palm Sunday, Jesus, our healer, our Alpha and Omega, our helmsman in the storm, hear us and let our cries come unto you. Receive our welcome and acclamation this day and hold us in that picture frame of you in the fullness of time on Palm Sunday, making preparation, leading by the example always of humility and patience from the saddle of a donkey. Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the son of peace. Lord, before everyone in Jerusalem, in spite of the crowd celebrity welcome, you knew your days were numbered. Today, thousands, because of this virus, have been plunged into that sad reality. Have mercy, Lord. Christ, have mercy. So as we wave our branches of acclamation, remind us we are in your safe hands, no matter what. Lead us, Lord, from fickleness, half-truths, and comfortable hypocrisies to a deeper relatedness and connection to your love, surpassing all knowledge. Hold us in the thrall of knowing the initiative now is entirely with you as we surrender without reserve into your safe hands. We pray for protection and wisdom for our leaders, for those operating essential services, and for those who are ill and frightened in our community and city. We give thanks for the provision being made for the homeless in our city. Repeat to us this day, O Saviour, your words of long ago to Moses. No plague shall fall upon you to destroy you. Teach us that our present troubles will last for a season. Mantle us now with the covering of your presence and comfort in our weakness and pain. Recreate in us the assurance that after Easter Day, as with Mother Julian in the 14th century pandemic, we shall say, all will be well, all manner of things will be well, all will be well. Amen. Let us close the service with our final hymn.
While you listen to the marimba postlude by Eric and Nandi, enjoy Van Gogh's last paintings of olive trees. Notice how Van Gogh has now placed people among the olive trees, olive pickers working hard in the heat of the day. The Garden of Gethsemane becomes a place of harvest. From early on in Christian art, the harvesting of olives was used to symbolize resurrection and life after death. Van Gogh's olive pickers speak to us of such hope of life amidst all the hardships of daily life. The last known painting in the series depicts a couple walking among olive trees. Van Gogh seems to blend starry night with his olive groves. An idyllic scene that speaks of peace, harmony and an Eden-like garden. The red-headed male might very well be Vincent himself. And so with the final words of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, I commission you to rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And may the road rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon the fields of your life. And may God hold you in the palm of her hand until we meet again. Amen.